All right, good morning, folks. Um, let's go ahead and let's get uh, right into it and get started with the um, where we left off with yesterday. And we were talking about the um, this property of liquids known as vapor pressure. So liquids exert vapor pressure because they evaporate. So uh, we talked about evaporation yesterday. We finished up with evaporation yesterday. And we were talking about how with evaporation, then it's a process that requires heat. Uh, the liquid absorbs heat from the surroundings. And then the particles at the surface of that liquid, they, they, they absorb enough of the heat, their kinetic energy increases, and then they can break free of those attractions that hold them in place, and then they fly up into the, uh, uh, the space above them. Okay, so as soon as the particles uh, break free of their attractions, then they are no longer liquid particles, they now become um, uh, gaseous particles. Okay, so these particles here, these are the particles that have left the surface of the liquid, which we have indicated here. So uh, this is uh, evaporation. Evaporation is occurring here. And as evaporation occurs, the particles now go from the liquid state into the gaseous state here. And so as they, uh, so as a result of the gases forming up here, we see then the pressure begins to form. Okay? So pressure is, when we talk about vapor pressure, it is the pressure exerted by the vapors, the gas particles that are above the liquid, but the vapor pressure is a result of evaporation of the liquid. So we know then that the pressure up here is building because we saw then, and we answered this question yesterday, that the, uh, the mercury tube here is, is changing its height, the height from the original height here in which both sides of the mercury tube are at the same height to the second frame here where there is a, the, the, the column of mercury on the right-hand side is greater than, the, is higher up than the column of mercury on the, on the uh, left-hand side. And so there's a difference in height here which can only be accounted for by the gas pressure, the, the vapors here, the vapors that were for, that, that formed from the evaporation of the liquid, the vapors here forming and pushing down on this column of mercury. Okay, so that's how we know, that's the evidence that we can use to show then that there is a vapor building over here. Over here, we know that the vapor, um, that we said, I pointed out that this is a vacuum here, and so therefore the pressure over here is gonna be uh, uh, zero as well. And so as the pressure builds here, it pushes up. The pressure on this arm of the uh, apparatus on this tube here will remain zero. And that's the only way then, so the pressure here will remain zero atmospheres. And that's the only way then that the um, gas particles over here can exert a pressure strong enough to push it over, push the uh, mercury column up, okay? All right. So where we left off with, and what I asked you to consider on uh, last night, and so go ahead, if you don't have it in front of you, go ahead and pause the video and go grab your answer from the question yesterday. And that is, I, left, I asked you, what's happening in this third frame here? Okay, so if the pressure is starting to build here, what's happening here? Well, okay, so go, please make sure you, you grab your paper. So pause the video, go grab your paper, and then come on back, okay? So what's happening here is that the pressure continues to build. So if we consider this the initial pressure of the chamber, and, and so let me go ahead and break. If we consider then in this first frame that the initial pressure in the chamber here is zero, because there is no evaporation, the vapor, uh, the liquid has not started to evaporate yet, so the pressure here is zero. And we can say here then that the pressure then is uh, pressure one in the first frame here is going to be greater than zero. Okay? And so it's going to be greater than the pressure of the first frame. So this will be frame number one. So this is the very start. Okay? And this will be frame number two. This will be the second uh, as it starts, as the, uh, as the evaporative process starts. Okay? Well, what's happening in frame number three here? Okay. Well, what's happening in frame number three here is the evaporation continues. The evaporation continues because we have the, the, the liquid starts, the, the uh, continues. And so as the evaporation continues, what you'll notice here then is the height on this mercury column in the third frame here is greater than the height in the, of the mercury column in the second, uh, in the, um, in the second frame here. Okay? So if we refer to this pressure here as P1, we can imagine then that the pressure here, which we'll refer to as P2, will be greater than the pressure in P1. So the pressure builds. Okay? So in this third frame here, we see then that the pressure builds. And the reason why the pressure builds is because evaporation continues. Okay? 
And so the pressure builds, the evaporation continues, so the vapor pressure continues to get higher and higher, and, and as a result of evaporation um, uh, continue. Okay? So if we, if we say then that the, so therefore the temperature is, uh, so the evaporation continues, okay? but let's just make sure you understand, as we do this, the temperature is going to be constant. Uh, as we take, uh, take our observations, we have to make sure we remember that the temperature is going to be constant, or else we will have a hard time then gauging what the vapor pressure of a gas will be. Okay? So each, I'm sorry, uh, the liquid will be, each liquid has a unique vapor pressure. Okay? Each liquid has a unique vapor pressure, and I, and I wanted to repeat that because we can use that vapor pressure to identify possibly what the liquid is. Okay? So vapor pressure is one of the properties of liquids that is it, what we remember we refer to as intensive properties. It's unique to that particular liquid and is not dependent upon mass or the volume of the liquid. Okay? So um, that's what uh, that's what we can uh, that's what we can use vapor pressure for. Okay? All right. With that said, then let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, let's let's take a look at what uh, happens next. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at what happens next. Okay. So as time passes, so as time passes, what we're going to notice then is the vapor pressure. So as time passes, and we we take a look at this here. So as time passes, take a look here. The pressure does not change. So uh, let, let's say then we take the pressure at some other time. Uh, so we we call this P two. Uh, P2 at pressure, uh, pressure at time three, then that starts to remain constant okay, as what we have here. So this is pressure two, remember. This was pressure one, and this was the initial pressure here. Okay? All right, so as time continues, as we start to continue to, um, to uh, measure or, or observe the column here, so we've noticed then that the uh, mercury column increases from, uh, from the second frame to the third frame. Okay? Let's imagine we had a fourth frame out here, and we, we continue to observe this column here. Okay. So we continue to observe, and we continue to take pressure measurements, and we notice then that the pressures do not change. Okay. So if we continue to measure the pressure, we notice then that, that this column, the change in the column here, uh, stops. Okay. It, the column starts stops moving uh, upward. Okay. And so what's happening at this point? Okay. Well, let's imagine this here. Okay. These particles leave. Okay. Does evaporation stop at this point? And that's the that's the question we have to ask ourselves. Okay. Does evaporation uh, stop? Well, make sure you understand that evaporation doesn't stop. Evaporation doesn't stop. Remember, temperature was constant. We said then that temperature has to be constant, or else this uh, this this discussion doesn't really work, which is we're changing this variable here. Okay. So if temperature is constant, then the evaporative process will continue. The liquid particles at the surface here, they will leave. Okay, they will leave, and they will uh, form the vapor the vapors up here. And 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 so, if that is true, if if um, if um, the the process uh, continues, why doesn't this mercury column change? Well, there understand this. At some point, you will reach these particles here. There, you will reach this saturation point. Okay, which means then. What happens is that these particles have nowhere else to go. They, they are occupying this space here. And because mercury here has a weight, it has a certain weight that it pushes down on, it will no longer move. It can't move anymore because it's the weight of this column here, the weight of this column here is, is too great for these particles to push down on. The, the weight of this mercury here, which is the gravitational force, so gravity pulls down, and that's how we uh, designate gravity here. Gravity pulls down on this column. As long as this column is in, in um, on Earth here, gravity pulls down. Because remember, the pressure on this side here is still zero. So it's not the pressure of the gas. There is no gas on this side. The pressure there is still zero. So that's not what's pushing down and resisting the, uh, the, the push of these, uh, of these particles here. It's the weight of the column itself. It is the weight of that mercury column pushing back down now. So pushing back down, that keeps this mercury column from continually to move, uh, continue to move up. Because if that weight wasn't there, if this, if we didn't have the weight of this, this part of the mercury column pushing back down, we would continue to see this mercury column continue to rise and rise and rise. Because remember, this is zero. There's a, a no pressure on that side. Okay. All right. So, what happens then? If eva evaporation doesn't stop, so evaporation continues here. Evaporation will continue. Okay. If evaporation continues, why then? Does the column not? Uh, why then does the, um, the column not continue? The, the why doesn't the pressure continue to build up here? 
Well, again, what happens here then is that these gas particles here, these particles here, okay, if they, remember, they're flying in all different directions. Remember, gases move in random, rapid manner, which means then some of these particles will fly in that direction, downward, back towards the liquid. Okay? And so as it does so, it comes down. So as, as time progresses, as it does so, these particles here collide back into the liquid and they, they reestablish those attractions that they had before. And so when a liquid particle goes back down into, I'm sorry, when a gaseous particle goes back down into the liquid state, that's a process that by which we call condensation. So condensation, remember, is a, the, the gas becoming a liquid. Think about uh, spring morning when the dew, you see the dew on the, uh, on, the, on the grass, that's the water vapor cooling down and becoming a, a liquid again, okay? And so this is the process that happens here. So the, the gas particle here, the water vapor particle here, goes back down into, into the liquid, it collides in with the liquid, and as it does so, it becomes part of the liquid again, and so it condenses, it condenses. Okay, so there's condensation occurring at the same time. So evaporation continues, but the reason why all the pressures will remain the same, and we know that because the mercury confidence has changed, is because now, we have also condensation occurring. So we have condensation and uh, evaporation occurring at the same time, okay? All right, so let me ask you this question then. If, that, if we know that, okay, let me ask you to consider, and on your paper, uh, I would like you to write this down, okay? okay. How do we know that, um, that uh, the condensation is occurring and how do we know then, um, what are some evidence uh, that's occur that we know uh, that we can obtain from the diagram here to support then that um, that the evaporation is, uh, is still um, that evaporation is continuing, but condensation is also occurring. Okay, so how do we know that? Okay, so what what uh, evidence do we have for that? Okay, so go ahead and let's uh, uh, write that down, and then let's compare answers when you come back. Okay. All right, let's let's go ahead and answer this question. Okay. So let's consider then uh, what's happening here. So we know then that the uh, condensation is occurring, okay, and, and we know that evaporation is occurring, and they're occurring equally. Okay, let's consider what happens with the uh, mercury column here first. Okay? Let's consider what happens to the mercury column here first. If the evaporation rate, let's go ahead and consider this uh, evaporation rate. So we know then if the rate of evaporation is greater than condensation, okay, what would we see happening? Well, if there's more particles going out here, okay, then we would see this liquid level drop right here. Okay, so we would see the liquid level, liquid level drop, we know that. We said then that if the liquid level drops, that means then that's what we can observe. And, and um, th that observation itself will provide us with the, the evidence that the, the evaporation is occurring, okay? If then, let's go ahead and consider this. So, so right now that can't be true because the liquid level stays pretty much the same here, it's constant, okay? If the evaporation rate is less than the condensation rate, the rate of condensation, then we would see the opposite. The liquid level, um, um, I'm sorry, I didn't finish this here. Liquid level would drop. Okay. So here then, if this second was true, liquid level would increase. Okay. So the evidence then that we have um, uh, that, that the condensation is, is, is going to be the same as the evaporation is that the liquid level stays the same and so too there's this uh, level of mercury here. Okay, so there's no, uh, it, it would be easier for these gas particles to fly back down into here than it would be to, to try to continue to, to uh, evaporate and continue to try to push up on this column here. Okay, so what happens then when, when this level, liquid level, stays the same and the mercury column doesn't change? What, what is true then about evaporation and condensation? If, the, if case number one's not true and case number two is not true, what can we say about the rates of evaporation and the rates of condensation? They have to be equal. Okay. So at, at this point here, when we don't see any more change, we don't see any more change in the level of the liquid, then we've reached what's called a dynamic equilibrium state. 
we, first of all, equilibrium means then that the rates then will be the same. So the rate of evaporation, which, um, so if we take a look at this, the rate of evaporation is gonna be equal to the rate of condensation. Now, what does this mean here? Okay, what does it mean to say that we have rate of evaporation versus rate of condensation? Okay, so how fast the liquid evaporates is countered by how fast the gas particles go back uh, and condense. Okay, so what's happening here is if you can imagine kind of if you've ever uh, been into a big office building with the rotating uh, doors or, uh, that allow people to go in and out. So if you have a, a, a number of people going in and you have a number of people going out, if the number of people going in is greater than the number of people going out, then you'll end up with more people inside the building than outside the building. If you have more people going from the inside of the building and heading outside, then you'll have more people on the outside of the building than inside, okay? So with that said then, if you have an equal number of people going in and out, in and out, the number, the, the, the people going in and out will change. Okay, the people going in and, uh, and out will change. But if the, the equal number, the rate of people going out, the rate of people that going in are the same, then the number, the total number of people will be constant. It doesn't change. The total number of people will be constant. Well, that's what we're saying here then. If you have an equal number of particles that are leaving the liquid as going back into the liquid, then at this point then we refer to that as an equilibrium. They are equal. The rates are equal equilibrium okay and so the number of particles doesn't change and so that's why then the liquid level here does not change because we've reached a state of equilibrium we refer to this as dynamic equilibrium because it, it, the, the particles are still moving but it's not like they've stopped the particles the, the uh, evaporation the particles are still leaving the liquid uh, condensation the particles are still going back into the liquid so the rates are still the same and the uh, but the process continues Condensation continues, evaporation continues. They don't stop. Because you can imagine this then, if evaporation stops, if evaporation stops, what would you see happening? If evaporation stops, so here this becomes zero, what would you see happening? Well, first of all, you would see the liquid level rise, okay? And the mercury column then shifting back in the opposite direction, okay? So that's what you would see if this was not a dynamic equilibrium, okay? So let's go ahead then. Let me ask you, sorry. Okay, so what's the evidence that we can use to support this dynamic equilibrium? And so let's just go ahead and answer this question then. The mercury level doesn't change. The mercury column doesn't change. Okay, the mercury column does not change, sorry. Okay, so that uh, is one piece of evidence, okay? And the second piece of evidence here is that the liquid level does not change, okay? So the liquid level does not change. And so that because of those two then, we know then that the, um, uh, we've reached a, an equilibrium. Now, my question for you then, okay? My question for you then is how do we know that this is a dynamic equilibrium, okay? Well, like I pointed out to you, and I'm running a little low on time here. If it wasn't dynamic equilibrium, the rates would not be equal. Okay? If it was not a dynamic equilibrium, the rates would not be equal. So if you go back to the previous slide, if the rates aren't equal, then you're gonna see a change in the liquid level here, and you're gonna see a change in the mercury uh, level here as well, okay? So as long as these two do not change here, if there is no change in each one of these, then we have reached a dynamic equilibrium where the, the rates of evaporation, and the rates of condensation are exactly the same. They have to be the same or else the liquid level and the mercury level will change. Okay. All right, let's go ahead then and uh, let's uh, finish up here with our discussion. Okay. So when they reach this uh, uh, state of dynamic equilibrium, okay, so let's make sure we, uh, I, I highlight this for you. Okay, so whenever this state is reached right here, okay, whenever this rate, the uh, vapor pressure is gonna be constant. Okay, so that's, that's gonna happen. And the condensation equals, the, uh, the rate of condensation equals the rate of evaporation. Those two conditions must be met up with uh, um, uh, for dy dynamic equilibrium to be established. The vapor pressure doesn't change, it, it remains constant. Okay? However, the rate of, uh, but the condensation and the evaporation continues, but they are the rate, uh, how fast they are going, are equal to one another. Okay, so that's 
Uh, that is what uh, we use then to determine the vapor pressure of a, of a liquid. Okay. okay, so let me ask you this then. Okay. And um, I want you to answer this question for me. Okay. I want you to uh, leave with this and I want you to analyze this graph here. Okay. So to point out that what we have here, and I want, I want you to answer this question. Okay. So we have temp uh, temperature along the, um, uh, the uh, X axis here, pressure along the uh, Y axis. So this is a pressure temperature uh, graph, which we are, and we have two uh, liquids. We have liquid A, so we have one liquid here and a second liquid here. Okay. First of all, what I'd like you to do then is that I want you to tell me what is happening to the liquid. Okay. What's happening? What's happening to the liquid? To the both liquids, Kim. Okay. All right. And uh, what I'd like you to do uh, afterwards is I want you to tell me which liquid has the greater vapor pressure. Which liquid has the greater vapor pressure? And so please answer these two questions on, uh, uh, on your paper. What's happening? What's happening to these two liquids here based on the information given to you on this graph? Okay? what's happening to it, and which one has the greater vapor pressure. Okay, so answer those two questions and then uh, have the uh, answers uh, with you tomorrow. So to make sure you uh, include that in the uh, work that you'll submit today. Okay, have it for tomorrow, and then we'll pick up with this discussion tomorrow, and we'll finish up with the discussion of vapor pressure tomorrow. Okay, folks. all right. Have a good day, folks, and I will see you tomorrow.